Hi, I'm Elise Butler and I'm the Membership and Outreach Associate at Georgia Historical Society. My favorite thing about history is learning about prehistory, which is the history that takes place before written records, which is why I'm here to talk about Native American artifacts with you today and their culture. Typically, prehistory is broken down into four different periods. You have the Paleo period, which is between 10,000 BC to 8,000 BC, the Archaic period, which is around 8,000 BC to 1,000 BC, the Woodland period, which is 1,000 BC to about 900 AD, and the Mississippian period, which is about 800 AD to around 1600 AD. The first period of prehistory we're going to talk about is the Paleo Indian period. The Paleo-Indian period is when the Native Americans were constantly moving across the land. They were following the patterns of the animals they were hunting, so think really big animals like giant sloth, ma uh, mastodons, and they were following those patterns, so they weren't staying in one place very long. So you don't find a lot of artifacts from them because they're constantly scattered all over the place. After the Paleo-Indian period came the Archaic period, and the Archaic period is characterized by smaller groups of Native Americans um, banding together. There's also smaller game, so the big game that they hunted in the Paleo period has become extinct because of climate change. It was a lot colder in the Paleo Indian time than it is in the Archaic, so the game has been replaced by smaller creatures, and they're still hunting them. They're still not quite sedentary, so that means they're not staying in one place quite yet. Okay, they start using smaller tools in the Archaic period because they're not hunting that big game. And because they're not hunting that big game, they don't have to travel as much. So they start making pottery, and the pottery that they start making in the Archaic period is not what you would think of as today's pottery with all the pretty designs on it. It'd be your simple, just like a simple bowl, and they would also, they would often use the materials around them to make the pottery, like Spanish moss. The next period is the woodland period, and the woodland period is when you start to see a lot of changes happening. The biggest change is that the Native Americans started to become sedentary, so that means they were starting to stay in one place. And also, they started to develop horticulture, which is basically them making use of the plants that are around them. It's different than agriculture because they're not actually planting crops and changing the way that they're grown or develop, but they're just making use of what's around them. There's also a development of mounds and effigies. So because of the Native Americans being more sedentary, the culture starts to evolve, and it evolved into the Mississippian period. And the Mississippian period is characterized by chiefdoms. And chiefdoms, it, what that is, is where there is one central ruler who governs over a village or multiple villages. One example of this is Etowah Mounds up in Cartersville, Georgia. Etowah is a good example of a chiefdom because it has one big mound, a grand plaza, and other mounds surrounding it. So basically you had one chief that would rule the entire area. Studying Etowah, we begin to see ways that Native Americans defended their mound sites. One way at Etowah is the moat. There is a moat that goes around the site, which was a form of protecting the site. You also see palisades which is a wall of logs that goes around an entire site. This is also a way to keep intruders out. The thing to remember when studying the Native American periods is that the periods aren't quite clear cut. They're more of artificial periods that we came up to to help us categorize what we find. For example, these objects from the Georgia Historical Society collection. This projectile point, which you may call an arrowhead, is something that has been reworked. It was a bigger piece that they took and they made it into the smaller point. The thing about that is it's kind of hard to date that way because it has been used over. They recycled it. Also in the Georgia Historical Society collection, we have pot sherds, which, as you can tell, are just pieces of broken pottery. The pottery was broken either when it was somehow buried or it was in a trash pit. Trash pits are fantastic places to find more about the culture that you're studying because everyone loves going through other people's trash. <laughs> this pot shirt, for example, it has 
what's called a simple stamp on it. It has a pattern, it's a crisscross pattern, and they were just putting a stamp to it whenever they were making it. This stamp appears in different time periods, though. It appears in the Woodland period and also appears in the Mississippian period. So it's sometimes hard to date what exact period this piece comes from. So transitional periods, they could be quite tricky. I'm sure you've heard a lot of stories about Native Americans, but they're not all necessarily true. I would like to shine some light on some of these myths and help bust them. The first myth I would like to bust is the term mound builders. Have you heard Native Americans from the Mississippian and Woodland period called mound builders before? That's not necessarily true. Mound builders is a term that was created by Europeans when they first came over to America. They didn't quite believe that the Native Americans could create these complicated villages. So they created a different group of people called the Mound Builders who were no longer living in America that were responsible for creating these mounds. We now know that that was not true, that the Native Americans did build these mounds, but somehow that term Mound Builders tended to stick with the Native Americans who built the mounds. So the term mound builder isn't quite correct. <laughs> you may also hear that all mounds are burial mounds. Well, that's not exactly true. Mounds held multiple different purposes. The big mounds typically housed the chief. They were flat on the top and would allow for a structure to go on top where the chief often lived or he ruled from. You also have smaller flat top mounds, which would allow for you know, bodies to be prepared to be buried. You would also have your typical burial mounds. And then some mounds, we just don't quite know what they were there for. You may have also heard that there was trade between the Native Americans in Georgia and the people who are living in what is now considered Mexico. While there is a lot of similarities between the two groups, there's a lot of cultural images that are the same and overlapping, there has been no direct archaeological evidence to confirm that there has been trade. So while it is nice to assume that this may be true, there's no scientific evidence. So be careful when you say that. 